I went by the hospital to take Robin a change of clothes. She was sleeping, but the hospital told me that she can check out today, and I know Robin. She's going to want to leave as soon as she wakes up, so you need to get yourself together so you can go over there and stop her. Oh, Jason, did I, did I spend last night confiding in you about Robin to make myself feel better? I don't think so. Robin needs a friend to convince her that therapy is a good idea. I can't. She's always fought to stay alive. Like, how she dealt with her HIV, she could have given up, but she didn't. This postpartum thing has gotten her seriously messed up, and I think she needs some serious help. That's where you come in. Robin has a lot of people who care about her. Like you. You can tell her to go to a doctor. I'm not that person, okay? I can't do it. I can't? What does that even mean? I, I can't. I went through treatment after my head injury, psychiatric as well as physical. I hated every second of it. You're not Robin? That's my point. <sighs> I'm sure you were no picnic for the doctors Well, you either. know, the doctors always talked down to me. They thought they had all the answers. They didn't have the answers for me, so I'm the wrong person to go tell Robin to do when it comes to this situation. After everything Robin's done for you, I think she deserves more than your standard excuse for doing nothing at all. She does not need another person telling her what to do. You guys loved each other once. I remember, I mean, I, I was a little kid, but... You were the one that convinced Robin to go on the HIV protocol, and that saved her life. Robin made the choice. All I did was help her get there. So help her again, please. Jason, at least for Emma. I mean, that little girl deserves a mom who's not so trashed by depression. She can't even go near her own baby. And don't tell me that is Robin making a choice, because you know she would never choose to be a lousy mother. Pass the message along. We'll take care of it on this, um, on this end. I, I gotta go. Be careful, it's easier to follow than you think. You know, I was just trying to decide if I should, you know, come to see you. So you did hear what happened? Yeah, it was an accident. Patrick actually jumped in and pulled me out of the water. It was foggy and dark and I slipped. I believe it. You don't know how good it is to hear somebody say that and mean it. I can, I can still see that you're, you're in trouble. And I'd like to help you if I can. Thank you. I actually know what I have to do. I just can't bring myself to do it. Oh my I was standing right here where I've stood a million times before. I know, but you've never had postpartum depression before. I've had a hard time thinking clearly, and uh, I'm always exhausted. And I think I hallucinated. Uh, what did you see? A little girl. She was standing right there. She was about ten. She had big, sad eyes. She said her father was a doctor. She said that she didn't have a mom because her mom didn't want her. She said her name was Emma. You think you imagined her? She's everything that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of my little girl growing up thinking that I don't want her. Yeah, but Emma's still a baby. There's time to fix this. But I do want my little girl, Jason. I've always wanted her. I just... Hey, I'm not supposed to be alone. Hey, Robin, mean, you can... You can do anything that you want to do. You are one of the strongest people that I know. What if I'm not anymore? What if I do everything that everybody wants me to do? I take a pill, I go to therapy, and nothing changes. What if this entire nightmare has nothing to do with postpartum depression and I'm just not fit to be a mother? It's all out of my control, which is not a good place to be for a control freak like me. Okay, well, what's, what's one thing you can do to make you feel in control? Well, I don't want to take antidepressants. I mean, I even tore up my prescription. I ended up taking them because Patrick was on my case. And Sonny has already given me the speech about the miracle of modern medicine. I just, you know, I, I hate the idea of being dependent on a pill. Yeah, well, I don't think they're meant to be anything but for short term, and they could help you. 
Would you take out your presents? Well, uh, I don't have a baby to take care of. You know, the life that's falling apart. <laughs> you know, if, if Patrick had said that to me, I would bite his head off, but it's true, and for some reason I can hear it coming from you. You know why? Because you don't like asking for help, and I don't like telling people what to do. That's why we get along so well. So why, why don't you tell me what scares you the most? What if this treatment doesn't work? What if... What if... What you're feeling isn't because of postpartum depression? What if I just don't want to be a mother? What if... This has nothing to do with postpartum depression? And what, what happens to Emma if I don't want to be a mom? And, you know, what... What is she gonna do? I mean, what if, what if she needs me, my help, and do, my do, love? Do you hear yourself right now? I mean, you, you're worried about it, but you want her to be cared for and loved. And that's what mothers do. It's worth I think you should keep taking the pills and keep going to therapy and just, you know, give them both some time to work. Who are you and what have you done with Jason? Jason I know doesn't give advice. Mm. Well, it looks like you need it. <laughs> oh boy, do I. Do you remember how much you used to help me with Michael? I mean, you were so kind and, and nurturing and I just I just remember that you would you would rock him to sleep. And of course I was so clueless at the time and when he would cry you would hold him and comfort him and you knew exactly what he needed. And somewhere, I know you've got that for Emma too. I'll try. I promise. I promise. Thank you so much.